Hi, I'm Tam with the SCO for the Solar Storm Forecast for the week of July 13th. For those of you lucky enough to see the beautiful filament eruption that lift off the center disk on July 9th, some of us had been watching this filament for quite some time, so when it began to erupt, we were extremely excited, thinking, oh my goodness, there's this huge monster that's going to lift off and be Earth-directed. But what actually happened was only a partial eruption. Only part of the magnetic fields broke and erupted, and as the plasma lifted off from those broken field lines, they got trapped by closed arcades above it, and so the plasma was channeled all the way back down to the surface of the sun. We had very little plasma escape, and therefore only a very small eruption and a very small ejection that's headed toward Earth. Now, if this thing had actually erupted in totality, this would be a totally different forecast than what I'm giving you today because those types of filaments might actually cause the superstorms, like in 2003, where we actually have power blackouts. Luckily, though, that's not the fate we're facing here. And anybody remember the ominous cluster of active regions, 1785 and 87, if they've transited the disk this week? Well, despite their complexity and their evolution over the course of the past few days, they have yet to light off any X-class flares or any M-class flares, for that matter. And now that they've rotated past center disk, they still have the complexities, you can see by all the different colors which show the magnetic mixing, but NOAA has downgraded their threat potential for an M-class flare to 30%, which will wane to about 10% over the rest of the coming week. So we don't expect there to be much flare potential left there. So what was the sun doing this week? Well, you can see the cluster of active regions just whistling and farting, all that white light, those are the C-class flares. There goes the eruption right there, and it's nowhere near the active region 87 or 85. And when we flip to the flare charts, well, you can see the M-flare threat level right there, and we're just bumbling along and waiting and waiting, and we go back to the sun, and we're still waiting. Oh, will this ever end? Give us something. Okay, moving on. Well, one nice thing we did get from the sun this week was a beautiful geomagnetic storm from a one-two punch. Two CMEs hit us at the same time, and it gave us beautiful aurora in the, both the northern and the southern hemispheres for over two days. And I'll chronicle that in a separate report when I do a comparison of geomagnetic storms. So the real story here is that beautiful filament eruption I showed you earlier, and in this close-up you really can see how most of the plasma during this eruption does get trapped back down on the surface of the sun. But as we switch to our prediction models, this is Enlil. The top panel is density, the bottom panel is velocity. You can see when this thing is ejected, it is coming dead center toward Earth. And right now the predictions say it should arrive at the end of the 13th, maybe into the 14th. So expect a minor uh, geomagnetic storm to maybe a moderate geomagnetic storm. So grab your cameras, there should be some aurora, but also expect to have problems with your GPS, your cell phones, your Wi-Fi, and of course disruptions in ham radio. So what can we expect from the sun for the rest of this week? Well, these are synoptic charts, and they show all of the active regions all over the sun. Now, the east and west limb are shown by the vertical lines, and they bracket the Earth field of view. Now, we've been watching some spots on the backside, and you can see 1772 and 76 have just come into the Earth's field of view on the east limb, but there's a lot of new growth going on back here. So we're watching those regions to see how stable or unstable they might be. You can also see there's a coronal hole, and as we change to uh, sun view, you can see those active regions coming onto the sun right there, and you can see the tip of that coronal hole. Now, as that hole begins to rotate more into the center disk, we will begin to see fast wind from that hole, and that could actually cause a minor geomagnetic storm. And that will probably be happening within the next week to week and a half. Now, regions 72 and 76 have been pretty stable thus far, but between the coronal hole and all the new active regions that are going to be rotating onto the disk this week, we stand a strong chance of having solar activity pick up. So get ready for a geomagnetic storm on the 13th and 14th, and let's hope this new week brings us more activity than the last one did. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.